Do you get that the, the reason it's so hard to beat this is it's so off the chart diabolical and evil, people just can't compute. I understand that, okay? All the time, I, I, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and it's like I've been punched in the chest. And I'm like, oh, it's all real. Uh, uh, cause you'll, cause you'll wake up for a second and like, oh, and, and you're relaxed. You're at a place where you're, oh, and you're like, oh, the new world order. Oh, it's all real. Oh, you know, I, I understand not wanting to believe this. Believe me. But not believing reality is going to get us in trouble. You can be on hallucinogens and walk out on a 50 story balcony and say, I'm a butterfly and jump off. Folks, you're not a butterfly. If you don't have, a parachute on, you're dead. You're dead. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You are dead. You are dead. You are dead. Okay? So the only way out of this is to realize what's happened and to get the word out. And if and if I can hit that zeitgeist with the public, we've got the platform to do it. If if we can reach people with this information and break through, because I know people are like, oh, this is scary, I don't want to hear it. Doesn't matter, it's real, Bubba. It ain't going away just because you wish it would, okay? Believe me. I can't tell you the hundreds of times I wake up at like 3 a.m. and I'm like, I wake up, ah, oh, and, I, and I wake up thinking about fishing or hiking or my children, you know, doing something fun. And then I go, oh, but the New World Order, oh, it's all real. And then, for some reason, forgot, that's Stuart Rhodes calling me. For some reason, I forgot to uh, turn my ringer off. And I wake up, and it's just like, oh, and I said to myself, oh, it's not real. It's not real. No, no. And, and I, you know, the, the, I guess when I've just woken up, that's a weak place and, and in my psyche. And like, no, 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 no. It, it's not as bad. It's, it's uh, because my instinct is get out of the country, get out of the country. You know, when you wake up and then, and then all the news that you know and the research hits you and you're like, oh, this can't be true. I understand why you're in denial. I am in denial. I'm in denial about how real this is even when I'm conscious and awake and focused because it's so over the top. It's over the top. And we're not going to beat this by half measures. I've told media, I've told bureaucrats, police, preachers, anybody in a power position that you better start doing what you can to get the word out about this. You better A, decide what side you're on, and then B, realize the globalists have already profiled you. Even if you didn't know that you were going to wake up, they already knew you were going to wake up. You've already been profiled. They're already they're coming after everybody. They, they, they poison the entire water supply. They poison the entire food supply. They're targeting everybody. They've got armored globalist Pentagon, UN seed vaults and animal DNA vaults all over the world guarded with robot guns. You think I'm joking? Look it up. They have got uh, giant bunkers everywhere. Giant railways everywhere. Th this is Moon Raker. And of course, you know that was written by Mr. Fleming, who was MI6 and OSS in World War II. And he admitted before he died, he said, all of these are things that really happened or came close to happening or things that we discussed. Moon Raker, world government, industrialist with 100 other top world leaders, who want to kill everybody on Earth and create a utopia, and they're going to release a bioweapon to do it and go up to a, spa a, a space station for a year while this happens and then go back down to Earth. But, it, but, but in the real Moonraker, they're not planning to go off-world. They're planning to go underground. And they've got bioweapons that are timed out. I mean, if they admit they've got airborne Ebola and mouse pox and all this that killed 90-plus percent of people, imagine what they've really got. It's probably 50 years advanced. Lyme's disease is just one little accursed gift they gave us. It's basically weaponized um, syphilis carried around in a tick from Plum Island. This is the type of people we're talking about. So, so a lot of you people that serve evil, you think you're on a winning team and stuff. You are not on a winning team. You just hitch your wagon to an express elevator to hell. And I'm not talking about when you die. All right, that's enough for me. Said that about 80 times. Here is the audio of the video. It's at Infowars.com, red linked, top of the site. CNBC admits we're all slaves to global government run by bankers. We are absolute slaves to central banks. And again, they're saying this everywhere now. Here is the clip. So mostly what they do is hold summits. 
I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about in that. So we, you know, yesterday we saw some reluctance for the Bernanke Fed to expand their balance sheets and pump more money in. But the stock market knows that reluctance is, is totally different than not willing to do it at all. And that's why we saw oil and oil implode and gold trade off heavily because they're not a protected class. If the stock market starts trading off in the 10 to 15 to 20 percent area, the chairman's going to come in and throw some stimulus at it. So to answer your question, we are absolutely slaves to central banks because and we'd love to be slaves of the economy but the economic numbers continue to do nothing but trend lower mr. LeCamp do we work for the uh, central bank we know that mr. LeCamp we do, do. We this is a uh, free we do uh, look markets are driven by policy now they're not driven by market forces they're right. driven by uh, fiscal clips they're right, driven by right central there. so there you have it we they love to be slaves of the market but they're slaves to the bankers that's what Ron Paul's always said and these aren't free market bankers. They use the money and they use their knowledge of the market to shut down all their competition on record. So see, we're not in a free market. They're, but see, they're blaming the market here. They say the market did this, our only shots the bankers. No, 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 no. The bankers, the, the, the central bank, the Federal Reserve, and its European shareholders, they engineered all this. They're acting like, oh, the protected class of stock market, stock owners, are demanding he do QE3, they always had QE3 plan, but they wanna have a depression in the economy, the real economy, with the inflation over it to try to balance the two, but not balance the two for the good of the economy, balance the two so there's a controlled de-evolution of the markets, because when do banks make their money? When you go into default. Because they've gotten all those payments and all that interest, and when do banks always go after farmers? You've been paying 20 years on a farm. It's the, it's the 19th, 20th year. And there's a little known clause that you know your dad signed. You, you never read the deed. Suddenly they're there saying, we're accelerating the whole year. We want it right now. You got one week. You're like, well, I can get it to you by the end of the year. But and they go, that's fine. And they take your land. With interest, you've paid for it twice over. But they take it. The Federal Reserve... And same thing with European Central Banks, because they did a lot of this in 1913. Its charter is up. Its charter is up next year. And they're going to probably get rid of the Federal Reserve in name. They're going to call it something else. In a global OECD, Organization of Economic Cooperative Development, reorganization. That's the plan. And it's the OECD that's a private consortium that was the Marshall Plan for Europe that reorganized Europe after that event at the end of World War II. They're going to do that here. And they're going to, again, as I've said to you for 17 years on air, I really woke up 15 years ago fully, but well, to a, to a greater extent, I should say, for 15 years on air to be technical. They're going to implode the economy, and then you're going to beg for troops on the streets as hundreds are killed a day per major city in looting and robbing and killing. The only thing that's going to hold this back is not the police and military. It's going to be armed citizens. Everywhere where there are armed citizens, you have the crime rates still being suppressed because the criminals know that they're going to get their butt blown off. The problem is as things implode even faster, they're not going to care. It's going to get worse. You look at Chicago, New York, though, I mean, 30-something deaths a day now or, 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 or per weekend. I mean, it is crazy. Cops are getting killed every day now. Uh, it, things are going to degenerate. And let me tell you something, police. This isn't a threat. This is a warning. If you try to start the Civil War, if you do what the bankers tell you, and you go out and really try a gun confiscation, I, I, I mean, that's a joke. If 1% of 200 million gun owners resist, which would probably be about 10%, well, let's be conservative, 1%, that's 2 million people that you're fighting. Uh, and, and I mean, again, they're not going to wait for it on, on, on your terms. 
You know, you kill somebody's daddy coming to take their guns, their sons are coming after you. I mean, you understand that, right? The New World Order kills Alex Jones. What do you think is going to happen? I don't want people going after police if anything happens to me. I want the New World Order brought to justice. I want these globalists who are so afraid and think they're going to use a tyranny to protect them. See, they're scared when I go up and ask them questions or Luke Radowski or countless others go up and ask peaceful questions now. They start sweating and start running. Oh, I got one that can see. They all walk around like psycho con artists, smiling and lying when they got a bunch of idiots. But when they know you're awake, all of a sudden they, they shake their face and do a double take and go, I'm out of here. And if the New World Order thinks they're going to put us in re-education camps, if they think they're just going to do all this and nothing's going to happen, they got another thing coming. And again, I don't want all of this to take place. I don't want to go the way Germany and Russia and countless others went. But I'm telling you, we are on a, on a roller coaster going right down into a sea of insanity. When we come back, uh, I've got the local news now in St. Louis going, oh, well, yeah, there are tanks rolling around in the neighborhoods. Uh, excuse me, I, I kept saying wheeled armored vehicles. Those are some of those. They actually have tanks driving around, ripping the concrete and, and, and stuff up. And with their machine guns swiveling around from Maryland, and it is a martial law drill. I've already confirmed that with the police, but I have the Secretary of the Army saying they're getting ready. For 4,300, whatever it is, Marine Corps or Army, it varies, a brigade, a brigade in every major city. They've got a Rand Corporation map 20 years ago that I first started reporting on when I learned about it about 15 years ago. That's really what finally woke me up to this, where it talked about the federalization and how they'd have mercenaries in every town, and then they'd have the army and the marines, depending on the town, or both in the threat fusion centers, and then they'd have air, air assets, and then I got the documents on that, and... and we have the newscast now where they went out, I guarantee you they went out and talked to 50 people to find two that went, I think it's great. You go to other countries, they got troops on the streets. I want troops on the streets. See, this is all meant to acclimate the troops, the military, the police, and to gauge the public. And they just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it to get everybody used to it. And all oh, the Marines are here to run a DWI checkpoint in Central California. It's in the news. Oh, Alabama, the Marines responded to a mass shooting. Oh, it's the Kentucky Derby, the Army. Oh, the Super Bowl, the Army. Oh, the Army's running a checkpoint in Kyle, Texas, south of Austin. Oh, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, a little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research. The bankers plan globalism. We don't need factories. We don't need jobs. You know, we'll just have world government. All over the news, they tell us austerity's good. It's good we're going to be poor. It's good for the earth. This is the plan. And, you know, I was just thinking during the break, we have the Secretary of Defense, Panetta, and Obama and all the rest of them, their public letters, their testimony to Congress. We'll cue those up later in the next hour. Where they openly tell Congress, we're under NATO and the UN, Congress is not over war now, even though under law it is. It'd be bad enough to have the president saying he's a dictator, but now, no, no, he just says, I take orders from foreign governments. And it's not just Obama, it's the globalists. They've taken over. Look at Mitt Romney, bought and paid for by the same people. And folks think things are going to change. Yeah, they're going to change. He's going to probably get in. People are going to go back to sleep for a while until they find out the nightmare actually never stopped.